The Wandering Earth Part 2 is a Chinese action-adventure sci-fi disaster film written and directed by Guo Fang and stars Andy Lau and Wu Qing. Let's take a look. Hi, thanks for coming to Cinema Bear. My name's Eric Ortiz. Wandering Earth Part 2 is essentially a prequel to The Wandering Earth where the planet has to change orbit because the sun is expanding and humanity has figured out a way to essentially turn the earth into the Death Star by putting these little rockets all over the place in an effort to move it from one orbit to the other so that people don't die. And in this prequel we get essentially the discovery and the potential plans as to how to save humanity and the different ideas people have towards saving humanity. Some people want the planet to change orbit. Other people have this idea of preserving everyone's consciousness and creating like this matrix type of a future where we exist in the computer world. And there are people that believe that the earth is going to be destroyed and people that don't and the push pull of opinions throughout the story kind of create a lot of dramatic tension. I got to see the original Wandering Earth in theaters uh, almost as an accident. I was invited to it by a friend who saw the poster and thought it was a Chinese period piece because he saw the title Wandering Earth and Chinese letters and figured, yeah, it has to be a period piece. Little did he know this was actually China's first big action sci-fi adventure film. Uh, so he was taken by surprise, to put it lightly. And I was enjoying basically a Michael Bay film as done through the eyes of a Chinese uh, writer-director. The production quality is very good. It's right up there with, you know, space adventures that we have here, similar to something like Armageddon or Deep Impact or the right stuff, you know, even 2001 A Space Odyssey. So yeah, so this is right up there with the best of the best of Hollywood production. So you're not going to get a uh, knockoff blockbuster here. You're going to get the real deal. Overall, the acting is pretty good. Nothing remarkably impressive. I did like Andy Lau's performance. I thought that he was a bit of a standout. He reminded me a lot of China's like Robert De Niro or something like that. He's really good. But the rest of the cast is adequate. Nothing, nothing will blow your mind, but it's not you're gonna be rolling your eyes at anyone's acting in particular. I will say there are some lines that are dubbed that are clearly dubbed and do kind of pull you out of the experience, but it is such a visual onslaught of events happening that I don't think you're necessarily gonna care too much. Now this movie does have a bit of an identity crisis in the sense like the first hour is essentially a blockbuster action film. The second hour leans into the intrigue and the political aspects of this. There are scenes that take place in the UN and scenes with the scientists as mentioned with the you know save everybody's brain in the computer type of a thing. And there's also this third hour where it turns into more of a disaster film where characters sacrifice themselves for the greater good. It kind of reminded me of those 70s action films where all these big things are happening but at the very end it's one location with one character with one sacrifice for the greater good and you can see it coming and it might work for some. It didn't really work for me but hey that's just my opinion. In terms of directing style, Yao Feng is really evoking a lot of Roland Emmerich here. Again, the action sequences are huge. Even the scenes where characters are just talking have almost this grand scale to it. This is unflinchingly a huge blockbuster disaster film. I wish the script was just a little bit tighter because this movie does push the three hour runtime and I don't think it needs to be three hours. I do appreciate how this story bleeds right into the original Wandering Earth. So if you put them back to back, you're essentially watching a nice six hour movie. But it does kind of tend to overstay its welcome. I mean, Wandering Earth Part 2 is definitely a very interesting film. It's not amazing. I kind of prefer the first one because it's more of a fun ride than this one is. This one really tries to give you story and character and it doesn't necessarily succeed. But I had fun with what was there, and I think you will too. It's streaming right now on Netflix, so give it a try. Wandering Earth Part 2. Please check me out tomorrow. I'll be reviewing Weird Science. Starring Anthony Michael Hall, Bill Paxton, Kelly LeBrock, and Robert Downey Jr.
So, what would you little maniacs like to do first? She's alive! Alive! Uh, Thanks for watching my review on Warning Earth Part 2. Please let me know in the comment section if you got to see the Warning Earth 1 or 2. Did you get to see it in theaters? I know I mentioned how I saw the first one in theaters by mistake. Uh, the second one, a friend of mine who's Chinese invited me to go see it with him at the IMAX and I made fun of him because I'd seen both movies in theaters and he hadn't. So at that moment I told him I was a little bit more Chinese than he was, technically. In any case, thanks again for watching guys. Again, my name is Eric Ortiz, this has been Cinema Bear and I'll see you for the next one. Sai Chen.